My name is Eddie. And I'm Xavier. So uh, welcome to today's uh, webinar. So uh, we have been organizing our online events since uh, we decided to postpone our API affairs. So to make sure we stay connected with each other on every Tuesday on and on every Thursday, we are organizing online events and uh, invite speakers from the fashion and leather industry to share their viewpoints with you. So uh, please stay tuned to our website as well as our social medias to get the latest updates from us. So uh, in case you miss any of our online events uh, in, the, in the past, don't worry, you can always go to our YouTube channel to watch the replay. So uh, before we invite our speakers uh, today, I would like to uh, tell you something about the webinar. So uh, we would like to know where you come from and uh, we would like to encourage you to exchange with our audience. So uh, you feel free to chat with all the panelists uh, and the attendees using the chat box. Uh, which uh, you can find near the bottom of your screen. Uh, but uh, make sure you click the, uh, to all attendees and panelists to make sure your message can be read by everyone. And uh, if you have any questions to our uh, speakers today, you, uh, you can use the Q&A box also near the bottom of your screen. And uh, towards the end, we would like to hear from uh, you about uh, your feedback. So uh, please help us to complete the survey before you leave. So today we have a great honor to have Gay, our trans consultant, to be our speaker to talk about the fashion product trends in spring summer 2021. So the trend will be uploaded to our websites after the webinar, like next week. So you can feel free to go to our website to take a look of our, the, the latest trend. And Gay, is a, she's a fashion trend expert with more than 30 years experience. And she has been part of our API Lab consultant, uh, consultant team since 20, uh, 2004 and help us to create all the trend related activities such as the trend area in the API Lab affairs. So let's welcome Gay. Hello, Gay. Uh, hi. Um, hi. Am I on? Uh, we cannot see you. There you are. We can see you. Hi, Gay. How are you? I'm good. Uh, I'd like to say hello to everybody. Good morning to probably our friends in Europe, if we have them over. Mm -hmm. And uh, good afternoon to the rest. So uh, you are going to share to us the trend of uh, fashion trend of uh, 21. So uh, what's, the, what's special about this trend? Well, you know, we, we, when um, the, the trends thing is, it's very different for, for us this year, because of course we, we are not going to have the show and the trends are like everything else. Is sort of not quite you don't quite know where we are where we are going to put ourselves right mm -hmm. so we don't know what's coming up mm -hmm. and uh, the pandemic has totally you know created the confusion and uh, and so actually what is happening now is these trends are actually going to be a reaction mm -hmm. all of these happenings in the world now mm -hmm. so like in my case, I'm in Manila in the Philippines. I am confined to my home. I cannot leave my house. Uh, I know that in some other places they have relaxed all of these things. But, you know, when you think about all of these things, that's how you can develop, you know, what mm -hmm. trend you would like to go for and what, uh, because that's how you feel. And uh, it's, it's the kind of inspiration or the mood that you are in. Mm -hmm. So the way I think it's very important how uh, how everybody would see the different trends that I would present. It's not it's not going to be the same for everybody. Uh, I hope that when they go through the trends with me to this afternoon, is that they individually on their own personal levels will be able to take uh, take back or how to say uh, be able to take 
something from the presentation and be able to develop their collections from that. You know? So uh, it's a, it's a very in a way it's a very, going to be a very personal mm -hmm. um, uh, expectation or experience for for all of us now. So uh, if you are ready, uh, can you start now? Yes, uh, I'm okay. sharing the screen first. I will share screen first, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Am I good? Yes. Yes. We can see your screen. Oh. Yeah. Is my screen on full? You can play. Uh, press the play button. Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so over to you. Okay. So hello again, everybody. So as I was saying, um, I, it is my pleasure to present to all of you the color, material, and product trends for spring summer 2021, as developed by APLF Creative Director Mr. Olivier Gelma, in collaboration with the Comité Français de la Couleur, of which he is the president. Through the trends presentation, I hope you will all get clear directions on how to develop your collections for spring summer 2021, including what colors to use, what type of materials to purchase, what textures to focus on, and what silhouettes and forms to go for when designing your bags and shoes and accessories for the upcoming season. So let's go right ahead and see what the style directions are for next year. So spring summer 2021 it's what we call a very it's so season where every innovation and excess is allowed it's a desire to free ourselves from the restrictions and traditions and more so in this at this time it is to free ourselves from the confinement and the fear imposed by this horrible pandemic so it's so much about having a new philosophy of life particularly as we go forward in this age of what is being called the new normal. So let's see how all of these events and the people around us are shaping how we look, we look at and approach fashion. So I just want to, uh, if you have your eyes on the screen, note that we have four different stories to discuss today. First story is about the modern minimalist style. Second is the youthful, sporty lifestyle. Third is for the mature, loving, uh, nature-loving, free spirit. And the fourth focuses on luxury and glamour. So let's go now to our very first story. We call this So Light, So White. As you can see, we have some keywords here on the screen. So for this story, the words, the keywords that you must remember or, or keep in mind as you design your collection. These are minimal, modern, you have to have balance, it's unisex, it's poetic, think of transparencies, and luminous, luminosity or luminous. Later you will see as we go on, you'll see how these keywords affect our design directions. So what colors can we associate with so white, so light, or so light, so white? It's a lot of soft, neutralized colors. So we actually have, you know, lots of yellow, blue, green, pinks, browns, and grays, but, and of course, pure white. But if you look at all these colors, you imagine like you throw a veil of white on top of them. And that's how they create, you create a very muted palette for, for this particular story. So by the way, just to advise you that if you have the Pantone TPX guide, I suggest you look at the colors there so you can see the correct hues. Because of course, what you see on the screen are not quite true to the colors, unfortunately. Still, I think it will give everybody a good idea of the color palettes for the different stories. So as, as I said, very soft, very muted, very neutral palette. For materials, if you feel that you, this is the kind of design ethos that fits your, this is a story that fits your style, then choose materials that are very lightweight, very soft and supple, 
but at the same time, these are materials that are all about innovation and they're all very, very technical, high-performing materials. So if you try to break that down, if you are working with leather, so it's for leathers, it's, I think the main material that you're going to want to have is, is lambs, lambskin, which is very supple. You're going to go to with textured suede, and now we have uh, the fine, very fine, soft patent leathers. You can go with reversible leather and fabric combinations. So lizard skins. These are the kinds of leathers that will probably fit this story in terms of the products that you will see later. Then if you are into non-leather fabrics and materials, again, it's a lot of technicality. So uh, technical shine, translucency. So we have uh, rubbery finishes. So go for semi-transparent nylons. Mesh is still, of course, very much in the picture. And uh, go for bio-organic PUs. We, we will also touch a little bit on the different motifs for accessories. So for accessories, we're looking at a lot of marble and stone prints and uh, a lot of wavy pleats, waterproof zippers, painted tone-on-tone -tone findings, or as you, you know, these are all the metal works that you have for your bags and for your shoes. So, so let's go to the, um, how do you say, um, to our product trends. As you can see in the slide before you, this is for so light, so white, and it sort of mirrors the color palette that I showed you earlier. So everything is very light and very soft and very muted. So let's just go over the different individual product trends, but just very quickly. So let's start with the shoes. For shoes or footwear, one of the trends would be for flat thongs with multi straps. Of course, you know that a, uh, a thong is a, a slip on footwear. And the important thing with the thong is that you have that strip of material that passes between the big toe and the second toe, which is what makes a thong. So usually the soles would be of rubber or leather. Very summer. You'll also have a very minimal what we call trekking sandals. And uh, if you are into a lot more of a sporty sport collection, uh, this is the kind of thing that you would want to have. Very simple, mostly one color if possible. The most would be two. So it's very, very clean, very streamlined kind of look. Next we have the high heel transparent mesh sandals. So all mesh, all transparent, major keyword for this particular story as well. And if you note, even the heel sometimes can be transparent. Then we have mules with cylindrical heels. So the round heel, expected to be a sort of strong silhouette for the summer of 2021. Again, you see very soft, muted colors. Now, the, these are the slip-ons with the wide leather straps. There can be two types of slip-on. I mean, basically a slip-on is, is a kind of footwear that you just easily slip your foot into, whether it has a counter uh, at the back or, or, or not, you know. But, uh, a slip-on is something that you don't have to tie a shoelace on or, or put on a, a buckle up. So that, that's a slip-on. So we want to go for those with very, very wide leather straps this year. Then there's the modernized babouche. Uh, the babouche, if you see to the right-hand corner, top right-hand corner of the, of the frame, this is a traditional babouche. Normally, it would be yellow but they, they do it in different, all the different colors. So it's a, a heelless, mule-like, very pointy leather slipper that's traditionally used in Morocco. So based on that original uh, babouche, 
you de- a lot of the um, you, you can develop a modern day version of it as you can see maybe putting on a little bit more of a heel than the original one and using different different materials for the for the vamp so long as the vamp the, the crit- critical thing is that for a babouche the vamp goes very very high up into the foot almost to the ankle Then there are the cut out or perforated leather Oxfords. And I guess you can also do it for derbies. What, what's the difference between an Oxford and a derby? It lies in the laces. If, if you see the top two uh, shoes, which are Oxfords, the, they have a closed lacing system, which the, the side tabs, you know, where the shoelace eyelets are, punct- are punctured. This is sewn under the, the vamp, while the derby below has an open lacing, meaning that the quarters are not stitched onto the top of the vamp. But then, of course, if you're a shoemaker, you know you know that already. So, but the important thing is go for a lot of perforated or cut out leather. Then for shoes, then the boat shoes, which are usually made of leather, traditionally made of leather with non-marking rubber soles that were originally designed for use on a boat. But now, People use boat shoes, boat shoes everywhere, and they've been given a more, I would say, sporty look with a, a more sporty sneaker kind of sole. Then, again, transparency is the word. Transparent soles for sneakers using a lot of very, very technical fabrics, very high performance fabrics, but clear soles. Let's go to bags, still for so light, so white. So go for oversized clutch bags. If you will see also, like especially in these uh, two um, photos, the bags are using very, very soft, supple leather. Lambskin would be a good, an ideal sheepskin or lambskin. Lambskin would be ideal for such kinds of designs. Again, cross uh, crossover cross bud bags, using very very soft supple leather, so you can ruche the leather or gather the leather together to create such an effect. So. You've, there's a softness and a lightness to this whole, to this kind of, uh, I would say, style of ruching leather. But you can only do it with leather that's light and supple and very fine, like lamb skin. Then you have small handbags. So the top handles don't drop off. So they're very rigid and uh, can use different different materials like there's some plastic on the green one and a uh, reinforced material on on the uh, enclosed uh, in leather on the one on the right then we have oversized supple belt bags which they're supposed to be belt bags but you can also use worn in this way, crossbody or bandolier style, as we call it. Knotted handles would be an interesting thing to include in your bag collection. So tote bags with knotted handles. Again, you see softness, ruching also on the one on the left. Then the backpacks that convert into belt bags. So for this, you're going to use a lot of the very light nylons or some other technical fabric that you may have on hand. So it's very light. It can be coming to a very compact belt bag as well. Then the weekender bags, lots of pack pockets, very, very convenient, but also very, very lightweight. This can be a combination of leather, light leather, you can mix with nylon or use nylon 
specifically. But the idea is keep it light and, and make it very, very practical. Then we have very soft leather clutches with striped quilting. Normally we, we see a lot of how to scale like the square sort of quilting for spring summer 2020, 2021. It's going more towards the, the striped quilting or as you call it, wait, let me, let me remember what you call this kind of pattern, but yeah, the sort of V pattern. Then we have minodiers with metal top handles. Normally minodiers are supposed to be like box clutches that are small enough to hold in one hand and you don't really, they don't normally have handles. But um, here they put in handles for, nice metal handles for the minodiers. So for accessories, so, well, of course, the mini phone bags weren't crossbody. And uh, again, bandoliers or belts with a lot of mini bags. So you, you put in specific, specific things for each particular bag, I suppose. Then we have very graphic shaped sunglasses. Again, dealing with a lot of transparency in the material that are used for the sunglasses. So they're very transparent and also very soft colors, very gra graphic shapes like circles, octagons, you know, I don't know. So, so those were the trends. I hope I'm not going too fast, but uh, we are on a time limit, so let's proceed. So this is the second story. This is so authentic and so tender. What are the keywords for this story? It's refined rusticity, contemporary craftsmanship, neo-casual, urban bohemian, sustainable, and savoir-faire which is savoir-faire, being the confidence and ability to say or do the appropriate thing in a social situation. So this is the kind of personality or feel that you want to have under this story. For the colors, this is a, what, we, what we call very sophisticated urban naturals. If in so light and so white, the colors seem to be whitewashed, here we see the colors, the green, the reds, the yellows, all given a slightly darker hue with lots of very woodsy brown and deep floral tones. So we're going a little bit darker in the spectrum now. And then for materials, so authentic, so tender leans towards more of the natural fabrics, of course, natural leather, natural fabrics, weaves, and very eco-friendly materials. So to break it down for leather, a popular choice will be vegetable tanned leather, of course. And so with Nubuck, handwoven leather, embossed suede, fish skins, and reptile skins. For non-leather, these are all natural materials. We don't see anything that's, um, I would say, synthetic in this particular story. It's all faded or recycled canvas, colorful heathered fabrics. So it's like fabrics made from hemp, bamboo, cotton, summer tweeds, which is from wool, straw and raffia, and all of these woven fibers. And for motifs and accessories, we go with very arty or very natural prints, very botanical floral motifs. And like for your bags, the metal findings will have earthy grainy looks. So it's not shiny at all. It's very, very, I would say, grainy as they say. So lots of working with wood. 
So here's our uh, little collage of the product trends. Again, let's start with shoes. So st straw thongs. So very, very natural. Perfect for days at the beach. I, as you can see, as the more natural it is, the better. Then we have Greek sandals, as opposed to the, what we call the, the gladiator sandals. The Greek sandal is sort of more simple, doesn't really quite come up the leg as a gladiator would, but it uses, it has a lot of uh, straps. It's actually, fantastic, fantastic footwear to use. So important is that you use vegetable tanned leather for this. Then wedges or thick soles are, are still there. So using wood or sometimes leather, covered wood, bamboo or raffia wedges. For pumps, it's a lot of using of the tartan, which is tartan fabric, which is a pattern cloth consisting of crisscrossed horizontal and vertical lines, uh, vertical bands of multiple colors. So of course, it's normally associated with the Scot Scottish kilts. So that's a tartan pattern on your pumps, and preferably a wooden heel. Then espadrilles, going a little bit high, platform soles. Though if we don't show it here, because I couldn't find any photos of it, uh, the, the uppers of these espadrilles, preferably if you can, you can do it with the macrame material, as I show here on the, on, on the right. So macrame material for the uppers, then platform espadrille soles. Low heeled and supple or soft, very, very soft loafers. So I think normally here you would probably go for um, suede, new buck. And uh, of course, loafers, you know, are, they don't have a lacing or fastening system. And, and they're also like slip ons, you just slide it onto your foot and slide it off. And normally with these loafers, we, they, they would normally have a very low heel, sometimes no heel at all. Then the braided leather sneakers. So braiding is quite the thing for this particular um, story. But it's quite a nice combination of leather braiding and a, a very, I'd say, modern sneaker sole. Then we had the flat, classic flat ankle boots and new book. Of course, you know that new book it's a, it has a fami uh, how would say similar feel to suede. That while suede has been sanded, coming from the inner layer of the skin, new book is sanded on the outer layer of the the animal. So. So Nubuk is definitely far tougher and more durable than suede and perfect for, for these shoes. Then go a little bit more colorful with colorful summer cowboy boots. Now back to bags. Leather handbags with wooden bead handles. Okay. The material on the left bag is not leather, but it's got the wooden bead handles I wanted you to see. So this is the kind of a, a wood bead handles. It's part of the whole natural look. Then we have the bandolier bags with the macrame flap. Again, it's not really being done yet, but if you can use macrame to create a bag. So if you see 
on the left, uh, these are the bandoliers. And uh, they are, uh, how do you say, like old style bags. They used to be used by the Indians to put in their provisions. And uh, a modern version of the bandolier came during the war. It's where the, the soldiers would put their ammunition. So create a modern version of the bandolier bag with its thick strap and the flap to try and make it with macrame. Then of course there's the saddle bags. Classic, classic silhouette, classic form based on the original, the true saddle bags that you put on the horses, the horses back. So but now they're saying that let's go for saddle bags that are much smaller in size and that you could actually instead of hanging on the shoulder, make them into belt bags. And then we have the bucket bags. Of course, you know that the bucket, bucket bags, one of the things that is important for it to be a bucket bag is the sort of round bottom or more circular bottom. And here it's there made from dubak. And if you see on the left side, so you have uh, laser, lasered leather. That would actually be the kind of material that would be work best with this. So a Nubuk bucket bag with the Nubuk with a laser motif as seen on the left. Then we have the hobo bags. A hobo bag, you have only one, one um, handle or at least if you have two, they come from both one end of each, uh, one end of each uh, of the bags, no? as you can see here. So you use leather mesh. And again, um, multi-pocket belt bags. But this one's not bandolier style not crossbody, but really used as belt bags with individual mini bags. And then again, going with a very natural, very bohemian style of this story, let's go for fringed knapsacks. This is very 60s, very ho boho style. And for the accessories, small leather goods in braided leather. And go for white belts combined with the uh, resin buckles. And uh, fringed raffia or Panama hats. So fringe on your hats, fringe on your backpacks. And then also again going for the, the natural wood horn and resin jewelry and accessories. So that was for so authentic and so tender. Now let's go to our third story, which is the more sporty, very youthful story that we have. It's called So Fresh and So Happy. And what are the keywords that you must bear in mind with designing with this trend as an inspiration? It's comfort, fantasy, sports, pop, fruity sweets, it's fun, effervescence, energetic. So really, really a very, very lighthearted, very, very sporty story. And uh, let's take a closer look at what it's all about. So, the colors for this, like very strong, very vibrant colors, still with a little bit of a grayish cast to them, but, but yes, very, very, I would say, bright colors with deep lilacs, burnt oranges, a soft, a soft lime color. Quite a very, very, how to say, a very colorful story. For materials, so leathers and fabrics that combine technical performance 
and uh, you know, but with prints and colors that are quite uh, young and sweet. For leathers, we are still very much into the smooth, soft, and supple kind of leathers like lamb or the napa. Glossy finishes are very strong. Metallics also, and weaves. And exotic skins are very colorful. For non-leather, so you still have the water-based peels now that uh, are made to look like leather, nylons and canvases, different leaves. You can combine different materials, as they say, we can combine leather with raffia, mesh, transparency still, figures in this particular story. I think it figures in all the stories. So transparency is a major trend, I think. So um, for motifs, vegetal prints on transparencies, laces and ties with glue dip tips, ribbons and webbings in transparent PVC. Anyway, this, all of these information will be included in the trends guide that will be available in the APLF website, I believe next week or end of this week. So let's go to the product trends for this third story. Let's go for shoes. So sandals with multiple colored ties. So use the colors. Fresh, happy colors all around. Then right? we go with uh, very thin, thin strap sandals. It's spread toes and stilettos. Mules again, but this time with kitten heels. And quilting, here we have a lot of the square quilts. Loafer, loafers, very, very colorful loafers. Again, transparency in sneakers. So transparent PVC sneakers. Quite interesting. And then more colors, colorful patent leather, thigh high boots, which really gives you a very, I'd say, very strong party feel. Now for bags, the color blocking remains. Very ladylike bags with color blocking. Again, transparent PVC handbags but with leather details. Now going for the more natural, using a lot of beads or recycled plastic beads or tubes to create mini, mini shopping bags. And then we go for the colored leather or net bags. It, it goes similar to on the bottom right, which are like more of a macrame kind of uh, material, but do it in leather. So create this net, netting in leather for, for your bags. Again, quilting, this time oversized. Not just in the size of the bag, of the tote bags, but also in the size of the quilting itself. So we have baskets made of woven plastic tubes. So a bit of recycling here. And even minodiers 
are going transparent. So with sports bags, transparency is key to the, to the season. Then a technical travel bag page. If you're doing travel accessories or travel, travel bags, it's important to now always integrate all of this um, technical stuff in, in, your, in your product, smart locks, luggage tr trackers, battery chargers. Although, let's see how long before we can all go traveling again. So, but in the meantime, create these kinds of uh, materials. For accessories, again, the leather clutches with integrated chargers, and then micro necklace bags in leather. Carry your telephone or your makeup or lipstick in a necklace. So webbing, belts with giant buckles. Something that's pretty now necessary, I think, in this day and age. So a lot of anti-pollution and anti-COVID tech masks with fun colors. You, you can be fashionable even in, in these days. No? Same with the printed transparent visors and face shields. Face shields are sort of the new thing. So I think they'll, have, they'll be staying for a bit, at least for a couple of years until we find the cure to the virus. So that's for our third story. Now let's go to our last, which is of course so exotic and so glamour. Here, the keywords are opulence, intense, tropical, Passionate, eccentric, rebellious, audacious, sensual, and ethno luxury. So, how does that translate to the trend? So, so, here the colors are really, really strong, very intense, very rich, sort of what you'd call toxic reds, very dark violets, deep greens, very, very sensual very, very, how you say, very luxurious color palette. And in the same vein, the materials too are very opulent, very sensual. In the colors, in the textures, very, very rich fabrics. So lots of metallics, very highly textured fabrics and leathers, a lot of embellishments, whether with sequins or stones. So for leathers, calf leather, honeycomb surfaces, wrinkled lacquers, so colorful metallic skins and reptiles. Ethno precious weaves for fabrics and materials. Again, metallic. It's going to be a strong story here. For motifs and accessories, so extra large metal findings with rhinestones and stones, bracelets and chains. So let's see the products themselves. For shoes, so this is like being so over the top a little bit with the oversized bows. Then the platform sandals, even those that are sneaker-like, just fill them up with rhinestones on the straps, on the Velcro or on the straps of the, you know, the sandals. Very blingy, as they say. 
Then the bamboo wedged sandal. I would, if I were going to go with a bamboo wedge sandal, I'd probably put a lot more of the bling on, on the uppers, uh, on the straps. And that would be make it, how do you say, fit the story better. But I was just going for showing you the bamboo wedge sandal sole. Then sandals with micro studded straps. So here, if you will do something like that, you can do it the same way for those, uh, for the bamboo wedge sandals. So lots of studs all over. Then very, very classic pointy high heel pumps in beautiful suede, beautiful leather, animal prints. The thing is, it's going to be very pointy. No round toes. Same thing, very pointy. This time ankle boots using mesh. Again, the translucence and the transparency is in, you know, in being used here with a very, very sharp stiletto heel. More cowboy boots, but now not just color here. You want to put in as many sequins as you can to make it really, really special. Then thigh high boots, preferably very shiny with patent leather. Then for bags, so work with varnished woven straw. So it's like using natural material, but you give it a little bit of glamour, no? Then the baguette bag. So put in a lot of embroidery or put in rhinestones. The bucket bag. The small ones, very rigid. But they have to be studied. I just put in some examples of the different ways you can have a bu bucket bag, but go with studs. First bags with the metal frames and decorative button closures. It was very hard for me to find such bags with really, really decorative button closures. I think the closest one would be the one on top, on the right, where they use, uh, how do you say, uh, Diamante shoes as the closure. So if you're doing purse bags with metal frames, try to develop more decorative, more crazy button closures for your products. Then we have uh, more of the fringe. We saw the fringe earlier. So now the fringe is also here in this story for, especially for the pouches that you do bandolier style or cross body pouches. Well here, you can also do fringes in different colors. Now we have the flap bags in leopard print. Pony, le leopard print pony with big buckles and covered in stones. Some, some in the picture are not so big. I think the one right in the middle is something that you, you want to try and go for if you want to go do something in, in this vein. And then the ladylike bags with the bamboo handles. So you can do it with a bucket bag, you can do it with a, with a tote style bag, you can do it with a very ladylike kind of bag, but all with bamboo handles. Then the raffia tote bags. But don't just let it be raffia, just put in prints, put in embroidery, put in pom-poms, do a little fringing of raffia as well. So style it up 
a lot more. Then mini gears that look like miniature briefcases. So it's not like the standard mini gear that have a very jewel-like feel or effect. Here, it's, it's looking like a briefcase. Hmm. And then for accessories, so chain telephone pouch necklaces. And sunglasses, again, lots of bling, lots of rhinestones and stones. Very, very decorative. And for more of the accessories, if you're doing metals, metal work, uh, how do you say, metal findings, if you're in, in this uh, business, then create a combination of chains and charms that can be placed on, on or attached to, to the bags. You know. And so that was it. That was uh, the last in our story. Thank you. I think uh, we can go into the question and answer now. Hey, thanks, Kate. Uh, I look at uh, the attendees, uh, so many of our uh, exhibitors are watching. So I'm, I'm sure uh, your presentation can help them to develop the collection for next season. So it's also very timely because uh, in the trend guide, uh, there is a uh, face mask and face shield. Uh, and I'm sure uh, it's uh, very useful for the post COVID-19 you know, era. Yeah. So, uh, uh, audience, uh, we are a bit running out of time, uh, but uh, if you would like to review what uh, Gay has presented in the, re in, the, in the video about the trend we will upload this uh, video uh, on our YouTube channel. And uh, this APF trend guide will also upload to our Fashion SS website next week, right? Yes. So, uh, Gay, thank you again uh, for the informative uh, trend presentation and mm -hmm. uh, for all audience uh, if you are interested in, in the, our upcoming uh, webinars and and uh, events you are reminded to follow our social media so uh, next week we uh, I mean this week we will have our in touch events on Thursday so we will focus on the leather for shoes and leather goods and uh, automotive leather goods. And on next Tuesday, we will have Orietta from Atari Studio to discuss with you on the consumer behavior in the post COVID-19 market. So I believe a lot of you will be interested in. So make sure to reserve your seats by scanning the QR code and share to your colleagues and friends. And you may also find the link in the chat box. And don't forget to complete the surveys uh, to survey the survey to help us to grow better. And that's it for today. And hope you have enjoyed our webinar. And thank you. And see you next time. Thank you, Kay. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye.